Good morning and welcome to the Wavy Digital Desk. I'm Sarah Good, and we're here today for Domestic Violence Awareness Month to talk with local organizations that have resources for this area. And Kiana Patterson has been championing this effort at Wavy. She's been covering domestic violence for years, and this is a real focus for her as well this month, but throughout the year. So I'm gonna pass it over to Kiana. Hey, yep, good morning. Thank you so much, Sarah, for having us on the Digital Desk, and we are joined with some champions in our community. We have Marlisa Montgomery with the Geneve Shelter. She is the executive director over there. And then we also have her board member um, with the Geneve Shelter as well, Kim Ellis. And then we have Christine Pine. She's the COO over at YWCA in Norfolk. So thank you guys for joining us this morning. We're just gonna jump right in. We know October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. So we're going to start with Marlisa, then we're going to go to Kim, and then we're going to go to Christine. And then we're going to ask why domestic violence awareness is, um, why we are uh, promoting awareness this month, and then also what can people do in the community to support survivors of abuse. So we'll start with Marlisa. Well, we are celebrating um, our 35th year. Um, this is also Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And we are in the process of wanting to build another safe house because there aren't enough beds available in the Western Tide water community that we serve. We have a large territory, which is all rural communities. We are serving Suffolk, Smithfield, Isle of Wight, Franklin, Southampton, and Surrey. And we get calls all the time. We're available 24 hours a day. And we realized during the pandemic that it's not safe to put families in the local motels. And we were running into all kinds of problems. And of course, it's not uh, cost effective either. So we decided to um, launch a capital campaign to build another safe house, which is called Nora's Safe House. And so we're excited about building this new home. Um, because it will give us an additional um, 15 beds um, for our victims and um, that will transition into survivors. And so we are spreading the news. Um, we're out all around our six localities and throughout the communities, letting the public know about um, this expansion of our program as well as bringing awareness for domestic violence because the numbers are certainly increasing and the cases are becoming more and more violent. And so we wanted to um, do everything we could throughout the month of October to bring awareness and also raise funds for our new safe house. Thank you so much, Marlisa. And then Kim, could you ask, answer how can people get involved? How can we help support the effort to build this new safe house? Well, we do have a gala going on on Saturday of next week, October 28th from six to nine. That's a great opportunity. Um, as I serve on the board of directors, we've been able to organize um, and call from our community supporters uh, for domestic violence awareness, um, helping out with every aspect, um, financially, employment, um, just helping our victims to go from uh, victim to survivor. Um, I have a unique opportunity as uh, serving on the board um, because I was a domestic violence uh, survivor myself. Um, so I know for me, the domestic, uh, the Geneva Shelter has taught me how to go from, from victim to survivor. Um, because really when you are in uh, the throes of a domestic violence uh, relationship, it affects every aspect of your life from finances to relationships, employment, your parenting, but basically your self-worth. So it's very important for the community to realize that there are so many victims out there and um, silence is a big part of it. But when you have advocates in your community who can help come alongside and provide assistance, that's an amazing opportunity for each and every person in Hampton Roads to make a difference. Absolutely, thank you so much. And then we're gonna go over to YWCA. I know this is the week without violence. So tell me what that means and what you guys are doing over there. Yeah, so the YWCA is part of an international YWCA and a national YWCA USA. Um, and so this is our week without violence. And so YWCAs across 
the nation are, are marking this week um, and asking folks to raise awareness of gender-based violence um, and imagine our world without violence in it, right? So, um, and then we are definitely tomorrow night having a conversation that matter at Norfolk State. We'll have a panel discussion looking at the racial disparities mm -hmm. in domestic violence. And to answer your your question, um, just as Marlisa and uh, Kim have said, certainly our funding is down, um, cases are up, violence is up in our communities. Um, so obviously donations are um, appreciated, but also we look for volunteers. Um, our staff caseloads are really high right now. And so any, if you can't, don't have treasure you can give, you can certainly give your time as well. Absolutely. Um, there was a quote that I shared last week from the Her Shelters um, executive director over there, and she says, give if you can, but just call us and say, how can we help? That's really the best thing you can do. Um, so that is my challenge for everyone watching this, to just call your local shelter, call the Geneva Shelter, call YWCA and say, hey, how can I help? Um, so, yeah, so let's go on and pivot over to Sarah. I know she has a list of questions for you guys. <laughs> Well, you know, just to start, and I think, you know, let's focus on October 1st. So I know that we all want to raise awareness all year long, but specifically in October, how important is it for people to come out to these events, to participate, to sort of be a part of the movement this month? If we want to start with you, Marlisa. I think it's very important because it will show that the communities are supporting domestic violence. You know, we know that we're sharing our month with breast cancer awareness. We never take away from that. However, domestic violence sometimes get lost in this month. And we just think that it's so important for the public to come out and support the domestic violence programs all across the state, just as they're doing with the Breast Cancer Awareness Month as well. And so we, we value and we appreciate all the support that we get from our communities, but we need more help and we need them to be more um, helpful in reaching out to us. And, and again, as uh, Olivia probably said, just give us a call, say, what can you do to help us? We need volunteers, our caseloads are high. The work that we do is extremely hard and stressful. And so if you are in need of some place to go to give a, a few hours of time or you have a community project, we are always in need. Um, and just think about the domestic violence shelters just like you would all these other programs um, that are having events during the month of October. And, and Kim, just to move over, you know, to the right, how do you feel, especially with your personal experience, you know, people really taking full advantage of what this month is. It's an amazing opportunity because, uh, like I said, domestic violence thrives on silence. And victims are often shamed and made to feel like they're alone. But when you see advocates in the community stand up and say, even if they're not survivors, I stand with you, that really gives everybody the opportunity, uh, domestic violence victims, to say, hey, I can come out of the darkness. I can say, you know, this has happened to me and how can I turn my, um, turn this thing around and make it something that I, like I said, I'm a survivor, I am thriving. And when you stand with other people as they um, start to heal from, from, this, uh, from, this, um, from domestic violence, it really makes a difference to say, you know what, I can stand with other people. It makes a difference in each and every person watching because there are more people watching um, from the sidelines, wondering what you're going to do to be an advocate, to aid other people. You, you really break that silence. And Kristen, for you, and you all have some really interesting conversations that you've put in part of your lineup for this month. How important is that, you know, in sort of the event scheme of what's happening this month? Yeah, for sure. I think anytime we can talk about domestic violence, as Kim said, and, and, and show victims who are currently in these situations that you can recover, uh, that there's assistance out there for you. And, and frankly, just to raise awareness of the issue. So many people really um, are uncomfortable talking about this, this issue and, and, and raising their voice, but that is so prevalent in our communities. And that, as Marlisa said, you know, the rates of domestic violence um, since the pandemic started, and certainly we continue to see just increased rates of violence 
uh, increased uh, violence in, in those relationships. So even to the point of lethality, right? So we're we're seeing intimate partner violence at levels that I've never seen, and I've been doing this work for for 23 years. So you know, so this October is just really really important. We do have a series of events going on. You can go to our website ywca-shr.org, uh, where you'll see a calendar of fundraisers, conversations that matter as we've been talking about, more conversations like this, and then links to how you can help. And I want to stay with you, Christine. I know that tomorrow you guys have an event addressing racial disparity, and that's also a topic that I am sharing a story on tonight on Wavy. So could you tell me what you are seeing over at the YWCA when it comes to the racial disparities? Yeah, I think, you know, at the YW, but certainly across the region and the nation, more black and brown uh, people are impacted by inter interpersonal violence uh, than the non-minorities, really. Um, and so it's so important that we raise these issues up, that we look at kind of the structural racism that we see in our communities um, and, and really work to remove those barriers to get those services to minorities, black and brown women and men and children um, who are impacted by this more, more prevalently than their Caucasian peers. And tomorrow's event oh. is a panel discussion yeah. at Norfolk State University. So at what time does it start? It starts at six o'clock um, and you can go to our website to um, register, but it's at Brown Memorial Hall. Um, we'll be talking to a panel of experts, Nisha Himes with the Grow Foundation, who's a survivor herself, Courtney Pierce with Samaritan House, and Dr. Stephanie Howard from Norfolk State University, who's a professor there that uh, does extensive work uh, looking at kids and domestic violence. And then I'll be on the panel as well. Listen, I love this panel. Every single woman that you mentioned, I have worked with and I think this is going to be a really good event to, to really discuss and disclose just how um, systemic racism has played a part in the racial disparity that we're seeing now. So thank you guys for all that you do. And then um, with the Geneva Shelter, I know that you guys are working with the Commonwealth Attorney's Office over in Suffolk. Tell me about the fundraiser that you guys have a little bit later in the month. We have another fundraiser where the Commonwealth Attorney's Office is supporting us. Um, and, and they're having this event at the Moe's um, Restaurant. It's downtown uh, Suffolk on Main Street. And we again, we're asking the public to come out and support that event. Um, the proceeds will come to the Geneva Shelter. And we have been partnering with the Commonwealth Attorneys for, uh, for many, many, many years. And we work with them closely um, because um, we're in court. On, on all in all of our localities throughout the week. And again, if there is a victim out there that's suffering in silence, feel free to call the hotline. The hotline is available. You can reach us at 757-925-4365. Um, we're here to help and all of the programs are trying to do whatever we can to overcome the, the recent increases in the, the cases that we're seeing. And um, we need the help. Um, we have some video rolling of the walk in mom shoes that we covered for you guys um, earlier this year. That was a Mother's Day event. Um, so you guys are always you know, doing different events and I know the YWCA does as well. Um, but talk with me about the programs that you have specifically for children. I know that you have the um, the, it, it's, it's like a, it's a support trauma. group. Yes. Yes. It's the youth trauma support group. Um, that program originated because a child was shot and the kids were on the school buses having a discussion and the school bus driver reached out to me and said, is there anything that we can do to give these children a chance to vent or share what they're going through? Cause they're definitely suffering. And so um, we started the youth trauma support group where the children are able to come together and, and share their feelings and get support. We have uh, two clinicians that is, um, over that group and the children are able to meet um, virtually and in face to face now. Um, and so it's been helpful. And we reached out to all of the stakeholders um, in the communities um, involved with children, the Salvation Army, 
um, the school board, um, all the churches, they were all invited to participate and, and to refer their children into this program so that the children will have a chance to share what they're experiencing. And, you know, the children suffer again, and there are so many layers of trauma that they are suffering, and they needed a way to express and to share what they were going through. That's awesome. And I know the YWCA also offers therapy for children and adults, correct? I, I remember doing a story on it, so that's why I'm bringing it up for yeah, you Yeah, so we have um, therapy for children and adults um, who have experienced uh, domestic violence, interpersonal violence, sexual assault. Uh, and then we have our Camp Hope partnership with the Norfolk Sheriff's Office, and that is for uh, kids who have been uh, exposed or were victims of domestic violence. And so that that's a one week sleepaway camp in the summer. We just had uh, our third one in August, but each month the kids come back uh, and, and have programming with their mentors and their coaches. Um, and so the kids don't have to wait till summer to get in that program, they can start now. So give us a call. Uh, if you know a kid that would benefit from that. It's a really great partnership. It's evidence-based and really shows to, to raise hope scores in kids. And so that really breaks the cycle of violence from these kids who have uh, been impacted. Uh, we really talk about healthy relationships and trauma symptoms and, and, and have fun while doing that. And I know the deputies with the Norfolk Sheriff's Office run Camp Hope, and they are always so excited to go on these camps and also do the activities every month. So shout out to so them the, for all their yeah, work. The deputies are the camp counselors, and they come back each month. And then some of our kid clinicians partner with them. Our children's services uh, coordinator uh, works with them to, on that. So it's a great partnership through the Family Justice Center. So, so I want to circle back to Kim. I know that you are... You are a survivor. Um, yeah. I guess what message, because we're about to wrap things up here, what message would you share with someone who is suffering in silence right now and is struggling to speak up? What do you want them to hear from you? There is hope on the other side. Um, I know for me, I just thought, well, I'll just put up with this for my kids. And I think sometimes, because I have, um, well, I have seven children now, but um, I had three at the time, and just seeing their hope get lost in the shuffle of of watching their father do what he did, um, and then I had lost hope. And um, really, the Geneva Shelter and any uh, domestic violence, um, um, anyone who helps out with domestic violence awareness, really gives hope to each and every victim and their children and anyone that's involved with them because a lot of times they're like, well, why do they stay? And it's because they, they actually have a misplaced hope that that other person will come around, that they will change. Um, but the only person that you really can change is yourself and you can advocate for yourself as well as if you have children or anybody involved um, that, you know, that you affect. So really reach out, get help, get help for yourself and you really can make a change. There is hope on the other side. Beautiful message. Thank you so much, Kim. And I'm um, listen, it is a luxury to sit and talk with you and for you to represent the board and the Geneva Shelter. So very good. And I'm just going to put up on, on the screen while we wrap up a link that will go to ab.com with resources, with stories, with all of your events that are happening this month. So if you're watching now, if you're watching later, just hold your phone to the screen and this will take you directly to the website with for resources and information. Absolutely. Thank you, ladies, so much for the work that you do. I'm going to keep saying it because I'm sure no one says it enough, but thank you so much for the work that you do with survivors and victims each and every day. And thank you for your time today. Thank, Thank you. So Thank you.